All right, so you consider making a move to Florida and you've been looking at all the areas. Maybe you've been considering Jacksonville, Miami, Orlando, Tampa, and you're starting to hone in on Sarasota. Well, this video is for you. Today I'll be revealing the five things you need to know about living in Sarasota, Florida that you don't usually hear. And if you stick around to the very end, I'll even share a few bonuses that could be really helpful in making that final decision. If we've never met before, my name is Juan Alcala. I make videos that are all things Tampa Bay. What it's like to live here, what it's like to work here, what it's like to play here. A little over three years ago, my wife Kate and I packed up our three kids, sold almost everything we owned, moved 1,200 miles to the greater Tampa Bay area and have been loving it ever since. I'm also a licensed realtor and a team leader here with the True Living Group, where we help people just like you buy, sell, relocate, and invest here in the greater Tampa Bay area. Now, before we get started on this list, I want to invite you down to the comment section below. This is a place of tremendous value. You're going to have locals contribute to the conversation. Sometimes it's beneficial, sometimes, you know, they may be a little over the top, but what I do believe is that helps lend perspective, number one. Number two, I wanna invite you to the comment section down below because I will not get to every single question that you may have. And I want to invite you to that comment section, leave it down below there. What will end up happening is I respond to all the legitimate questions down there. Any spam, we just push that to the side. I'll mark you as spam. But also the locals love to contribute to that conversation as well. Now, keep in mind, you will have people with opinions in there. Opinions are not necessarily always useful, <laughs> but people do love to lend them. And sometimes that perspective is fair and warranted. And again, as long as people are being respectful, I always leave the comments down in the chats below because I think that they can be extremely helpful. So I wanna make sure that you have access to ask those questions because you're gonna have more than the five things we're gonna bring up here today, even with the bonuses. Now, with that being said, let's get into what you need to know before moving to Sarasota, Florida. So the first thing we're gonna tackle on our list is one that people tend to shy away from, and that is diversity. And the reason that I bring that up, because more and more people are asking me about the level of diversity in these communities. And that is something that is difficult to articulate in a few ways, right? Number one, I have bias. And um, yeah, I said that aloud, I have bias. Yeah, I said that. I'm a human being, <laughs> right? I, I know what I know, I believe in what I believe, and those things can, can make or break someone's opinion sometimes. So I wanna just share with you that, um, you know, I do my homework on these videos. I'm gonna share all of my resources and I would encourage you to do your homework. You should be making the best possible decision for yourself, not relying solely on anyone's personal opinion, myself included, right? And I just always like to share that because like I try to be as transparent as I possibly can, but I understand I have bias. I love my kids, <laughs> right? If you have children, you know what I mean? Like, you know, you think that your child is probably going to be a world-class athlete. I don't necessarily believe that about my kids, but I know we tend to do that as humans. And we do that about a lot of things. So I just wanted to make sure that you know where my heart was coming from as I share these opinions about this. And of course, sharing, you know, facts and statistics and those things too. I'm going to share all the resources. I'll put them down below so you can have access to them as well, because I think they're incredibly valuable when, when it comes to making a decision. So I wanted to share that with you. All right. So getting into the diversity. One of the things about Sarasota, and let me share my opinion. You know, 10 years ago, we started the dream of moving to Florida. We really believed we were gonna live um, in the Jensen Beach, Stewart, Port St. Lucie area, which is on the Atlantic side of Florida, the ocean side. And for years, my mind was that Sarasota and South Florida was full of nothing but retirees um, who were living out their golden years and you know it was all old folks playing golf pulling their pants up to their boobs and retiring <laughs> forgive the analogy here but like literally that is the line that i was fed i was fed that by everybody around me who really was you know for lack of a better term they were ignorant of it they didn't know they weren't here um and and i bought into that narrative and let me just say that that is entirely inaccurate. Uh, there are there are some truths in that, and we're going to talk about that specifically. But that is not the only thing that exists in Sarasota. Um, as a matter of fact, it's not even a majority of the thing. So I wanted to bring that to you to the table because I remember when people would tell me things. Right, uh, Florida has mosquitoes the size of pterodactyls. Damn mosquitoes. You're gonna get eaten by an alligator if you go to Florida. I mean, all of these things that I was told that you need to be worried about that in all actuality have been some of the least 
um, disruptions in my life over the last five years. And diversity is one of those things for sure, right? And um, you can go look up the statistics about who lives where. And um, one of my favorite resources to use is a website called niche.com. And niche gives communities an overall ranking. Um, Sarasota is a county on the Gulf Coast of Mexico, in case you weren't aware. It's just about an hour south of downtown Tampa. To go from downtown Tampa to downtown Sarasota, it's about an hour and 10 minutes, give or take. You can be there in an hour, you can be there in an hour and 15, depending on traffic. It's about an hour and 45 minutes to Cape Coral, two hours to Naples, um, two hours to Orlando. Again, give or take traffic on that as well. It's really well located. It has its own international airport. Now, while flights may be limited there and they tend to be a little bit more expensive, um, you do have those options. So I wanted to share that with you. But one of the things that, I, again, my mindset was it was full of retirees. And to be honest with you, that was real for a very long time. But Sarasota has really started to approach things in a different light, um, bring new and exciting um, communities and developments to the county and to the area. Um, and that is starting to attract younger working professionals and younger families. Now, in the interest in transparency, um, Sarasota County, the median age is 56.6 years of age. So not the youngest county in the world, especially when you compare it to areas around there. As you know, I'll use Hillsborough County where Tampa is as an example. The median age of the resident there is 37.4 years. That's 20 years difference, y'all. So it feels different. So I want to prepare you for that, okay? Because that is true. All right, um, there are more retirees in Sarasota County and in Sarasota than there are in the greater Tampa Bay area in general. You know, Lee County, Charlotte County to the south, you've got Hillsborough, Pinellas County, and Pasco County that are all younger than that. You know, Pinellas County, um, where the Gulf Beaches are, Clearwater and St. Pete, you know, that's right around 48 years of age. You go up in the Pasco County, and that's right around 44 and a half years of age. So like, I'm, why am I sharing this with you? Because when, when it comes to living in an area, what most people want to see is a reflection of themselves. While people do really appreciate diversity, um, and that may be in different races or culture or food, or like, I, and I love all those things, right? They still wanna see a representation of themselves. Now, what do I mean by that? People who have a family tend to gather around other people who have families, right? And young working professionals tend to want to group around other working professionals because they're not ready to retire yet. And that's why we have 55 plus communities and I'm not sharing anything that it, that isn't true so I, I just wanted to bring this to the table because this is one of the questions you get asked now the culture in Sarasota is pretty darn diverse and it's it's continuing to grow in that direction so that is something you should be aware of right with new development with new opportunity that brings all different types of people and that is a good thing y'all at the end of the day now there are some things that you you know you want people to be in alignment with you and those are things you're gonna have to make decisions on your own whether that's political or religion or those types of things but I wanted to dig into this stuff because people always ask is it a diverse community well first and foremost go do your homework Secondly, I would encourage you to come down and when you start your, your, your process for moving, we call it community shopping, go check out what you see around you, right? Does that feel like home? That is the question you need to be asking yourself. Does this feel like a place I could and should either raise a family or work in until I, I make a family or until I retire to? These are considerations that I would encourage you to chase down. In terms of its heritage, Sarasota has some pretty cool preserved historical sites and and celebrates cultural events as well. The early settlers came from European countries like Scotland and Spain, and you can see that in the architecture and of course the food and dining as well. So if you're worried about the vibe, that's not gonna be a problem because Sarasota is known for having a relaxed vibe and an incredible quality of life. Now, when it comes to the cost of living in Sarasota, I want to be completely transparent and honest here. It is more expensive to live in Sarasota than other areas and a lot of other areas in the country, but I want to get into the specifics of why. Housing costs tend to be one of the biggest expenses when it comes to living in Sarasota. And prices can vary wildly depending on the size, the amenity, and of course, the location. Just in the last 30 days alone, there's been a 788 square foot, two bedroom, one bath, 
single family home that sold for as little as $240,000. And on the complete other end of the spectrum, you had a 4,500 square foot, nine bedroom, nine bath sell for a whopping $7.2 million. The median home price, which we've discussed ad nauseum, is $570,000 over the last 30 days. But the average home price, and listen, hear me out. This is the one that's gonna be closer when you start shopping for a home. That one came in for $896,000 for a three bedroom, three bath, roughly 2,000 square foot home. So if you're looking to move to Sarasota, it's gonna cost you at, at least 570 and on average right around $900,000 to get 2,000 square feet, three bedrooms, three baths. That's not a little expense. Utilities are gonna cost you more than you think, mainly because your air conditioner is gonna be running almost all the time. That's something to take in consideration. You typically will not use your heat here in Florida. It can happen, it's very rare. Usually people have heat pumps and emergency heat. They don't even have a, a real heater or they'll use a fireplace, so just keep that in mind. But you're gonna pay for things like electric. A lot of areas are electric only. You can find electric and gas, but that's the anomaly. Um, I would say that that's not the standard. Also, you're gonna be paying for your trash services, and of course, you're gonna be paying for water as well. So just keep those things in mind when you're moving. Our grocery bills tend to be a little bit more expensive here in my experience, again, just sharing with you. Um, you know, my wife tells me all about what it costs to go get a bag of groceries now versus what it was three or four years ago. We've all felt the, the heavy hand of inflation. I understand that. But even when we moved to Florida, we noticed that we probably saw a 10 to 15% increase in our grocery bill. So just keep that in mind. Overall, Sarasota offers a very desirable lifestyle that does come with a higher price tag. So just keep that in mind. The fact that you're taking the time to watch this video and maybe even subscribe to this channel tells me that you're pretty serious about moving to Sarasota and Florida. And that's probably because of our incredible weather. And as we roll into number three on our list here, I know everybody talks about the weather. I get that. My goal of this video is to tell you things that people aren't willing to share on Google and aren't willing to share on the internet. So let's cover the obvious first. All right, Sarasota has incredibly beautiful weather, right? Somewhere between 230 days uh, and 250 days of sunshine a year. <laughs> and I love telling people, like when they ask me about moving from the Midwest to Florida, say, Juan, what's the major difference? And I always tell people the exact same things. You do not have to shovel sunshine. <laughs> Right, and I believe that too, and I feel it to my core and I am so grateful for it. However, that does not take into consideration how oppressive the heat here can be. And it is not for everyone. And I wanna share this with you because you have the naysayers, right? People are like, oh, it's too hot, it's unbearable. You know, basically they think that if we live here, we're just absolutely insane. And guess what? That is okay. I can understand that perspective. Just like I think people who live in the snow, who are stuck there, I think that is insane. And that is also okay. I think snow is so beautiful over there. <laughs> I don't want any part of that. I hate the snow. And I'm willing to coat. sweat through two sets of clothes every day just to not have to ever bundle up, get cold, have car parts snap off because it's freezing outside, break out ice scrapers. I don't want any more of that, right? And, and you know, but it's not for everybody. Those temperatures, which I deemed oppressive, right? That was the word I've heard somebody use before. And I had to, I was like, that is a great word. I'm going to use it because it's fair. The way that I equate this is it's like, it's like being in an oven that someone put a pan of water in the bottom of in the summer. And I'm talking about July, August, September. Those are our three hottest months. They, the average temperatures in Sarasota are right around 89 or 90 degrees during that time period. And it is tough. You see a lot of our retirees, they go back up north or they go out west or wherever else they have homes, they just leave. This is typically when all of our families take vacations as well. That's normal if you live up north, you take your family on a vacation too, I get it. But here in the South, we travel north at that point trying to get some relief because it can be oppressive. Now, we also have hurricane season, which runs from uh, June all the way through November. And that is something you have to be vigilant about. That is not for everyone. I've told lots of stories about hurricane, you know, I, uh, Idalia just recently and Ian, while uh, we didn't take a direct shot of those, we were definitely a shot across the bow, so to speak. Um, and we had, you know, some storm damage and some flooding in areas 
areas. And this is something you need to take into consideration because this type of subtropical climate is not for everyone. You know, those winter months that everybody dreams of in Florida, which are incredible, we get five months with temperatures that average in the 70 degree range. And that is incredible. But we do have to deal with those three months that are really, really tough. And I would even say that June's pretty hot and uh, October can still be considerably warm. We start to get some breaks in there. Um, the, the way that I describe this is, um, is the Lord kind of walks over and turns the switch off in November. It, for me, in our five years that we've been here, it's really been like the second week of November. It's like the humidity goes away, the temperatures are perfect, the sun shiny, like, oh, this is what we're here for. And that, we move into our dry season there, but we also have a rainy season, and that comes along in those summers. It tends to start in June. It really ramps up in July, August, September. And what do I mean rainy se season? It, I'm not talking about monsoons like you're gonna see in the Philippines day after day. That's not what I'm referring to, but it will rain regularly, um, almost daily, if you will. And that typically happens in a, you know, in the mid afternoon, somewhere between like two o'clock and 6 p.m. Um, because it's gotten really warm and that's the way that the earth copes with it, right? It decides to help cool things down by raining. Um, and it's just, it's a welcome reprieve at that time because it can be intense. People tend to do more things earlier in the morning and they tend to do more things after, um, you know, at, at daybreak when the sun starts to uh, set, you really see people get more active because it is, again, it can be oppressive. So keep that in mind. Again, because of that sunshine, we have access to incredible outdoor activities, immense lifestyle, and all the things that come along with it. But the challenges can be that that heat can be oppressive and it is not for everyone. So keep that in mind also. Now, when it comes to jobs in Sarasota, I realized I could have included this in the cost of living, but I wanted to make it independent for a reason. Um, and that's because the Sarasota economy is also independent of any one industry driving um, the, the economy, if you will. And there are a lot of contributing factors here, tourism being one of them. But we all know tourism jobs don't pay well enough to have an $896,000 average home. So where is that money coming from? Because that's what we people tend to ask me quite often, like Juan, this is unsustainable. There's no way people can afford to live here at these prices. And yet, month after month, we continue to see home prices increase. And the reason being is because a lot of the people who are moving and relocating to the area here are bringing jobs with them or they're in professional services. They may be attorneys, they may be doctors, they may be uh, in tech. We see so much tech here in the greater Tampa Bay area. I mean, we're the number two destination in the country for tech right now. We are hot when it comes to that. So we're having a lot of people bring their big incomes. They're working remote. Um, they're able to come down here. We have a lot of independent business owners who live in the area and they are continuing to reinvest. Now, some of the heavy things that, that do influence here. We've got financials, we've got tech, like we said, construction is booming. If you've been in Sarasota for more than five minutes, you can look around. There are cranes in the air in downtown Sarasota. They're building these beautiful new construction buildings. There are new homes going up everywhere. They're tearing down old homes to put up new ones. I don't always love that, but in certain cases, I do think that that adds value, not takes away. Some of these homes can't be salvaged. They weren't built well to begin with. A lot of them were, but the ones that can't be salvaged, why would you not want to replace it with something that adds value to the community? So we're seeing a lot of that. And with our beautiful coastal real estate here, of course, we are very attractive to outside businesses, number one, and to residents. So that's why we're continuing to see this growth. Um, while we are pulling in younger families, which has an increased demand for education, it has an increased demand for professional services, again, like attorneys, doctors, um, you know, educators, like we said. So you're gonna continue to see this as long as the overall economy stays stable. I think you're gonna continue to see uh, Sarasota's job market increase. You know, there are a lot of different factors. People will drive to Tampa to work, but again, the majority of our employees who are high income earners either own their own business or they are working remote just to give you a little bit of perspective on that. Now, the next topic is definitely a hot button and no, we're not talking about the weather again. I am talking about traffic. 
If you are local, you think that the traffic here is absolutely insane. And who am I to argue? <laughs> because it has grown tremendously. And when I say it, I'm talking about congestion. It has been a um, continual uphill battle to try to get relief. And our road systems are growing. They're widening streets and lanes and adding highways all over the greater Tampa Bay area. And it still does not feel like it's enough. And drive times are now becoming inconvenient regularly. Just going to Publix on a Saturday, if you're anywhere near the beach, you know what kind of a pain that could be. Um, as an example, you know, I was down at Lido Key filming for this video and it took me almost 20 minutes on a Thursday to find a parking spot next to Lido Beach. And that is like, so frustrating. Man. There's a huge public parking lot. There's another lot right by the resort there. And there are free spaces right off the road, but they were completely full on a Thursday. <laughs> now, we are in season. For those of you not familiar with that term, um, after the holidays, that is when people tend to flock here from tourism. And they call them snowbirds. That is the, uh, a regular term that you will hear. But basically, people who come to enjoy our beautiful beaches, right? Siesta Key, which is unbelievable y'all. Siesta Key Beach is ranked as one of the best beaches in America regularly. You've got Lido Beach which is just to the north of that. Also a world-class beach um, in its own right. You've got Ana Maria Island to the north. There's a lot of things you can do there but the parking can be a challenge which means traffic is overwhelming and if you drive in St. Armand Circle you're going to see this traffic. You know they've added all these wonderful roundabouts. People are still struggling <laughs> with how to use those. Um, not everybody is familiar with how, how to use a roundabout so that can put pressure on the system. You know the beaches are really far away from the highway so if you have to go back to 75 say you're going to travel up to St. Pete or down to Venice or Naples or something you know know it's going to take you a tremendous amount of time so just keep that in perspective with all of this wonderful growth you are going to have challenges traffic is most certainly one of them driving habits what people bring to the table those are another we've had whole conversations about uninsured motorists in the state of Florida there are a lot of things to take into consideration about this but the traffic can be a nuisance is it unbearable I mean it could be, it depends on your temperament. If you're somebody who is short and angry about everything, you're not gonna like it here, but you probably don't like it anywhere. So keep that in perspective. If you can be patient and realize that, that this is part of the tax that you're paying, um, and I don't mean actual money, well, you're paying a sunshine tax. You're moving here to take advantage, most likely, of the incredible weather and amazing lifestyle that we have here in the greater Tampa Bay and Sarasota areas. And with that, it's bringing a lot of other people with the same mindset as you. So just be prepared for the fact that more people are moving to the area. The infrastructure was not built to handle that massive volume and things are going to take longer. If you just come with that mindset, it'll still be a great day. You'll still have a wonderful experience. The weather will be worth it. If you let an extra three to five minutes on, on your drive time ruin your life, I would encourage you to stay away. Go to rural Mississippi, go look other other places where you're not gonna have to deal with that because the reality is this is probably not gonna slow down. It's only gonna continue to get worse. Um, and worse is a strong word, but it's gonna continue to get more congested. That's probably a better term. And just keep that in front of you. Remember, the sun is shining, the weather is amazing. It is totally worth the exchange. And if it's not, just put that in your back pocket. Now you're gonna have to deal with it. You should probably cross it off your list right out of the rip. Now we've made it, it's bonus time. And before we get into these bonuses, I just want to invite you, if you have any questions about buying, selling, or relocating here in Sarasota or the greater Tampa Bay area, do not hesitate to reach out to me and my team. All of my contact information is down below. Heck, there's even a calendar so you can schedule a time that's most convenient for you. But let's get into these bonuses. I can't wait to share. Number one, and we alluded to this, it's the beaches, y'all. People come here for lifestyle. They are moving here for lifestyle. A lot of the times they're moving here for family. It's not often jobs, right? That can be the case, but people come here because they love soaking up the vitamin D and the vitamin C, S-E-A. And these beaches are beautiful. We talked about it. Siesta Key ranked as one of the best beaches in America regularly. You've got Lido Beach, which is amazing. You've got Longboat Key up there. You've got Anna Maria Island to the north. If you wanna go you know, just an hour north of you, you got access to St. Pete Beach as well, and you can drive an hour and a half and be in Clearwater Beach. There is no lack 
of abundant opportunity to be in gorgeous crystal clear waters, collecting shells, laying out, getting your tan, whatever it is, you will not be disappointed. You could kayak, you could paddleboard. That's one of the most beautiful things about the Gulf of Mexico is it is calm enough on a great day where you can take a paddleboard out and just live your best life. You can float around out there on an inner tube, hang out with the family and friends, whatever it is, it will not disappoint you. Number two bonus is it is a foodie's paradise, man. If you go down to St. Armand Circle, you got access to everything. One of my favorite restaurants down there is called The Shore. This place has a retractable roof, y'all. It's a convertible restaurant. And uh, one of my friends, God bless her, her name was Michelle Tanner. She hosted dinner there and she took us there. And of course we went at sunset and I'm sitting in this beautiful dining area great restaurant food was amazing and the roof on the back of the restaurant literally starts to retract and i was like is, is this real life right now <laughs> and it was such an enjoyable experience now are they going to do that when it's super hot outside no but at that time of the year it was absolutely phenomenal actually it was it right around the same time as i'm recording this now so it was definitely worth the experience but you've got the columbia restaurant you've got all types of different uh cuisine of course you've got oyster bars you've got seafood you've got um latin cuisine you've got regular american food you can get anything you want and that's just in st armand circle go check out the other areas main street is absolutely awesome all kinds of incredible restaurants bars, you know, places to pick up a cocktail, you won't be disappointed down there either. And the third bonus is all the activities. So first of all, my wife considers shopping an activity, so you can put that on the list. University Town Center Mall, if you have never been there, oh my goodness, I, I, I have never been to a better mall. First of all, I'm not a mall guy. But the shopping experience at University Town Center is unbelievable. You have everything at your fingertips. It's set up incredibly well. There's an Apple store down there. That's how I ended up down there at the one time. Um, outside, you got a Pop Stroke, which is uh, the Tiger Woods inspired like adult putt putt place. It, it, if you've been, if you're familiar with Top Golf at all, then it's like the a putt putt version of that it's un it's unreal you've got nathan benderson park which is right next and i'm just talking about the university town center i'm not talking about you know the polo fields or all the incredible community parks or you know the 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 biking trails the running tra there is so many things to do you know the art the the um the concert venues, you've got something for everyone when it comes to lifestyle and activities in Sarasota. You are not gonna be disappointed. And hey, I hope you got a tremendous amount of value out of today's videos. Like I said, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me and my team. Also, feel free to put those comments down below, y'all. We will answer those questions. Again, as long as they're reasonable, I got no problem answering them. I'd love to connect with you guys. YouTube is gonna leave two more videos right here that it thinks you're going to love and it are probably gonna help you make a decision about relocating to the area. And until next time, have a great day. We'll see you on the flip side.